Hello everyone! In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do one of the most popular activities I ever did as a biology teacher, and that's making a DNA candy model that looks a bit like this. Now you might be a student following along doing this activity for yourself at home, or a teacher who's trying to figure out how to do this activity for your students. So I'm going to walk you through exactly how I would do it with my students, and some tips and strategies for how to level up this activity for an honors or even AP level class, and some things to talk about with regards to DNA structure and replication. Alright, let's get started. So the materials I would use to do this with my students are Twizzlers, multicolor marshmallows, which I usually get from the Dollar Tree or Walmart but the different colors are very important in the lab. Toothpicks, a pen, and scissors and tape if you're going to do the replication part of this activity. You can just stop after you create the general DNA model, but it's always fun to go and do the replication section as well if you have the time and you're covering that in your class. So first of all, you have to assign each of the colors to a DNA base. So that's going to be either adenine, thymine, guanine, or cytosine. So the way that I do it, I usually say that adenine is orange, thymine is pink, cytosine is yellow, and guanine is green. G for green, that keeps it easy. But the colors don't really matter as long as you keep the assignments the same throughout the entire activity. Now obviously if you're doing this in class and students are manipulating the materials and putting their hands all over them and maybe working with a partner, I would really encourage students not to eat the materials, especially after they've created the DNA model. And so one thing I would do to discourage the eating factor is we would actually label the marshmallows with A, T, G, or C on them. And this helps students keep track of which color is which and also helps them with their base pairing rules. But you can also make a key like this at your lab table to keep each of the bases straight. Remember, A always pairs with T and G always pairs with C. And that's one of the things that you can practice as a student as you're doing this lab. So before you get started, I would have students work in partner pairs. And I tell every pair, every group to create an original DNA sequence. This can be anything they want. And I ask them to make it nine bases long or essentially three codons. So I have them fill out their DNA sequence on their sheet before they even begin building. They can do anything they want as long as it's not the same repeating bases for the entire time. So no A, -A, 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 -A. something, you know, like GCT, ACG, GGG. All right, so once the students have their DNA sequence written down on their sheet, they're gonna assemble one side of the DNA molecule. So to do this, they'll place a marshmallow on the end of a toothpick so that the point of the toothpick goes all the way through and then add that to a red Twizzler. So once one side is complete, students are going to match the bases for the other side. So they're going to place the color marshmallow for the matching or the complementary DNA base on the other end of each toothpick. Be sure to remember base pairing rules. So A always pairs with T, G always pairs with C. So in this case, orange is going to pair with pink and yellow will pair with green. Make sure all the base pairing rules are followed and then finish off the DNA model by attaching another Twizzler, which is going to represent the backbone. And now we have all the things we need for our twisted ladder or double helix. And you can even model it by twisting the DNA model so that it looks like a double helix. A real DNA molecule has a right-handed twist in the orientation, and there's 10 base pairs per complete turn of the double helix. So that isn't super accurate in the model that we've built here. Now, if you are talking about specifics and how DNA is an anti-parallel molecule, you can have students label the five and three prime ends of the DNA. To do this, Get some tape, write five prime and three prime on small bits of tape and attach them to one side of the DNA. Remember these primes are specific to the orientations of the carbons in the sugar phosphate backbone. And because it's anti-parallel on one side, we're gonna have five prime here and three prime here. And then the other side, we're gonna have five prime and three prime. Right, remember that the red Twizzlers are representing the sugar phosphate backbone with phosphates on the outside. And the colored marshmallows are representing each of the DNA nitrogenous bases, A, T, G, or C. The toothpicks are representing the hydrogen bonds that connect each of the bases in the center of the molecule. Now, obviously these hydrogen bonds do not go all the way through to the other side, like we can see in our model here. And those hydrogen bonds will differ in number depending on which base pair it is. And you can talk about that with your students if that is something you wanna bring up in your instruction. All right, at this point, you can either pause and be done, or you can continue on with the replication part of the DNA candy model. 
Now, what I would do is I would have students flag me down, raise their hand, and I would come and verify that they've made the model correctly before moving forward with the instructions. So they would raise their hand, I would check out their model, initial on their worksheet, and then they could continue with the next steps. For replication, you're gonna slowly unzip your DNA molecule with scissors. Remember, helicase is that enzyme that does the unzipping in DNA replication, and so your scissors are gonna represent that helicase. And if you wanna even talk about how new nucleotides are added in the five to three prime direction, continuously on the leading strand and in fragments on the lagging strand and there's Okazaki fragments, you can talk about that as well. Maybe present your students with a challenge when we get to the replication part to add the bases in that direction if they so choose. But I think it is easier to unzip it all the way. And then with those partners, each partner can take one part of the original strand and build a new strand based on the original. This is gonna represent our semi-conservative replication. So, so we're gonna maintain base pairing rules or adding new colored marshmallows that are complementary to the ones on the current strand. And what I like to do here is actually remove the old toothpicks and put new ones in. Again, this isn't really an accurate representation of what's happening with the hydrogen bronze, but it's a little bit neater and allows for a nicer model in the end. So while each partner pair is working on building their new strand, at the end, you're gonna get a new Twizzler and secure it to the toothpicks to create that sugar phosphate backbone that is new. Now you can do this replication part with black Twizzlers to show the new strand versus the old strand. I like to keep it red because in the end, we're making identical DNA molecules but it is up to you. So when you are done, you end up with two identical DNA molecules like this. This is semi-conservative replication because each one is built off of the original strand plus a strand that is brand new made with new nucleotides. If you like, as an extension, you can talk with your students about the enzymes involved in DNA replication and how the model accurately or does not accurately represent what's really happening in the cell. You can also have a discussion about what would happen if you put the wrong marshmallow on a certain base pair, which could lead to what we call a mutation. But there's lots of great discussion questions that can happen after you're done with this activity. You can encourage students to take their DNA models home, save them, hang them in the classroom. I don't recommend eating them, especially after lots of dirty hands have touched all the materials, but it is up to you on what you want to do with your finished product. Have you tried building a DNA molecule before? Let me know if you have in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.